And good morning and welcome to Wesley Way United Methodist Church. We're so glad to see you this morning. Let's stand now together and sing hymn number 575, Onward Christian Soldiers. standing as we reaffirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sit it at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Welcome again, everyone, uh, especially our guests uh, this morning. We're so glad you chose to worship with us. Welcome to all who are joining us online. Uh, those in-house, please take a moment to fill out the attendance cards and the pew pads so we can keep in touch with you. Uh, also take a moment to check in on social media and like our page to help share our church with others. Uh, a few announcements this morning. We will hold a pet blessing on Saturday, May 7th at 10 a.m. Bring your birds, your bunny, your cats, your dog, and other domestic animals to the rec field for a time of thanksgiving and blessing for our pets. Um, VBS needs you. Check with Michael to learn about ways you can serve this summer with our kids. Volunteers are greatly needed for that event. United Methodist Women is gathering donations for the annual Mother's Day offering. Uh, give in honor or memory of the moms in your life. Uh, names and funds are to be deposited in the envelopes provided by the UNW, and names will be presented in the bulletin on Mother's Day. For a couple more announcements, here is Michelle. And we also have a, a box back here in the back of the sanctuary for a love offering this morning. Um, our office manager, Elisa Henriksen, her stepmom passed away at the end of February, and she'll be traveling back to Arizona to be with her dad and her brother and family there for a, a gathering and a memorial uh, time together. That'll be this weekend. So if, 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 that had ha if they were here, if they lived locally, you know, as a church, we probably would have tried to provide a meal. We would have... Um, stepped in in a more physical way to uh, support the family, but being on the other side of the country, that's a little more challenging. So what we talked about as an SPR and finance uh, group is that we would um, just take up a love offering for her. That way the family could use it for whatever they needed. If she needs it for travel expenses, if they need it for um, you know, whatever food that they'll share together, just any kind of, um, any kind of need that arises. Uh, so that box is the red box back there in the sanctuary. And uh, apologies for, you know, just like letting you know that today she handles all the emails going out. So I didn't want her to kind of be aware of that as we were preparing it for her. Um, you can also give online. Uh, on our website, there is a, a donate button and then a couple of tabs will show up. And there's one that's just called Other. So if you wanted to give online, you could do that way, and um, that way you can do that digitally, and we'll know to direct the money that comes into other for the love offering for Elisa. If you have cash and you put it in that red box, it's going to go to Elisa. If you have a check and you want to note it uh, for the love offering, then we'll direct it that way as well. Um, so we appreciate your, your help with that. Um, as long as you get something in by Tuesday noon this week, I think that's where we put the cutoff, then that'll be able to go, go towards the need there. So thank you, thank you for that. And then um, Steve is over here. Steve had a, an announcement as well. Well, I'm mine. They can't hear you, other, they can't hear you without the mic. Yeah. Okay. Good uh, morning, Wesley Way. <laughs> um, being on the SBR committee has been a challenge for all that's on the committee. Uh, but I am pled, uh, privileged, actually, to announce that Michelle and Uncle Tim back there have been extended to our services for another year. So please welcome them. Uh, <laughs> very happy as a, as a SPR team. I know the church is pretty happy about that, and hopefully there will be a few more, mm -hmm. I hope. Yeah, we hope so, too. And uh, we appreciate everybody 
and all that you guys do. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks so much. Yeah, we're we're delighted um, to be back with you guys and uh, be here another year. So this is finishing four. We're fin this this June is finishing four years, which feels un doesn't feel right. But we lost a couple years with all the things and uh, that have been going on. So uh, so we're excited to to be able to stay and, and continue with you another year. Um, all right, well, let's have our prayer as we open with our worship this morning. Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity to be here. Forgive us because we take it for granted that church is available to us every single week and that we can come and, and go as we're able. Um, but Lord, it's a gift. It's really a gift to be able to be here today, to have that freedom uh, that we could choose anywhere to worship and that we have this place that we love and that we can be part with. Uh, we thank you. Uh, we thank you, Lord Christ, for your resurrecting joy this second Sunday of Easter. Uh, we give thanks. You have done so much for us, and we are overwhelmed by your love. So, Lord, move in our service this morning. Uh, draw us in deeper fellowship with you, and may our worship and our praise be pleasing in your sight. Oh, God, we ask and we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, well, we are on to a new scripture memory verse this morning. We have little slips of paper. You can obviously look it up online in all kinds of ways, but um, they're out there on the table under the TV in the lobby area. If you want to grab one of those and take home with you to work on memorizing it. So this is Proverbs 19, 11. And I, I'll read it first and then we'll read it again together. Those with good sense are slow to anger and it is their glory to overlook an offense. Isn't that a good one? That's, uh, Proverbs is filled with um, pithy statements, these, these short little phrases that you're like, wow, there's a lot of, a lot of meat on that particular phrase. And, um, and I just think this is a good one for us to, to commit to memory, to reflect back on. Uh, that's, that's a good lifelong verse that we might be slow to become angry and that we would um, overlook offenses from one another. So let's read that together, reference, verse, and reference. Proverbs 19, 11. Those with good sense are slow to anger, and it is their glory to overlook an offense. Proverbs 19, 11. All right, great job. Well, Michael's going to come now, and all the children are invited for our children's moment to come on down here at the altar. Why are y'all sitting so far away? Good morning, boys and girls. Are y'all excited to be here? Yes. I'm not convinced. I'm pretty excited to be here. And I'm excited that y'all are here because you know what I see when I see you? I see happy. That's true. I see a ref joyfulness. Yep. Y'all bring me so much joy and reflection of God, because we are all made in God's image. Did y'all know that Friday, I heard, was Earth Day? Did y'all hear that? It was, it was Earth Day. And I thought, huh, that's interesting. I'm going to read you something real quick. Yeah, Earth Day, you do pick up trash, that's good. And I guess the people who come up with all the national days decided that that was the day that we should reflect on, on, on our Earth, you know? And what does Earth mean? Our home, yep, that's good. And the planet, all right, what else? And what? And we have to help it stay clean. Okay, to so thank Jesus, to thank God for making the earth so that we could live. In the very beginning of Genesis, chapter 1, in fact, it says, starting in 129, And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. 
and there was evening, and there was morning, and the sixth day. So I'm going to pass this around. You all just take a look at it, touch it, feel it if you want to, and just kind of pass it on. So Friday was Earth Day, and then Friday night, I watched this show. It's a documentary about astronauts. Do you all know what astronauts are? What are astronauts? People who float in space? What? That's right. So they go to the moon, they jump and bounce around on the moon. What else do astronauts do? They collect rocks. They study space. Well, but they do too, right? And y'all didn't mention the thing that I thought was the coolest thing ever. They ride a very fast car to get there. And there's some innovation. So anyway, I read that and, you know, the astronaut said uh, uh, they're they taken this first flight and, you know, showed, showed the uh, dark, dark, dark space and then it showed the Earth. And do you know what the Earth looks like from up there? Like a small blue marble? Okay, that's good. Right, so it's just one big beautiful ball and one of the, yeah? Well, yeah, that's a good point because that's what the astronauts said. They said, you know, when we're up here, we look down and we see the whole Earth. They don't see borders for countries. They don't see what school district somebody lives in. They don't see if somebody's old or young. They just see one big beautiful Earth, and that is how God sees us. Are you all still passing the... Yeah, probably. But no, they really just see the whole Earth, and that's kind of how God sees us. So then I was out here Saturday, and we were working over there in the garden, which, which is a good thing, and uh, kind of getting that ready. And there was a little bird. It's called a killdeer, I think is how you say that. And that little killdeer just plants its, or plants its eggs, <laughs> lays its eggs, and just sits right there. So we have to kind of be careful with that. But I got to thinking about all this, putting it together, and, you know, out there. This came from out there. This just looks like a bunch of dirt, Right? Right? Yeah, it smells like dirt. But did y'all know, take one, these strawberries also came from this dirt. Just this little bit of dirt turns into something like that because that is how God has designed the system. That has, you know, everything just kind of works. There's this big, big cycle. And following Easter, and the reason that I thought about all this stuff is following Easter, are you changed? I'm changed because Christ died, Christ was resurrected, and Christ can save me from my sins because that's the system that God designed. So take a strawberry. Y'all can have all those strawberries. They're fresh from the garden. So let's pray, and then we're going to go upstairs and talk about other things like seeds. You ready? Almost. Two more strawberries. Oh, and by the way, those are good strawberries. I might have, I might have sampled them, yes. Yes, that's yours. If you want to save it, you can. I would just eat it if I were you, but whatever you want to do, it's a keepsake. It'll be a children's moment keepsake. All right, let's pray. Let's put our praying hands together. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for giving us the earth for us to be your caretakers of your, of your creation, and even produce food. Mm -hmm. These things we pray, things we pray. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name, amen. Now as we continue the celebration of the Easter season, uh, we will rejoice in the Lord of Jesus Christ by reading a Psalter reading from Psalm 150, found on page 862 in your hymnal. Uh, if you would please stand as able. Uh, I'm going to read the regular lines, and then the congregation will read the underlined lines. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God in his mighty firmament. Praise God for his mighty deeds. 
Praise God for his exceeding greatness. Praise God with trumpet sound. Praise God with lute and harp. Praise God with tambourine and dance. Praise God with string and pipe. Praise God with sounding cymbals. Praise God with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise God. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Now it is time for our offering. Um, and I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward. And as they're coming up, I'd like to thank you for all the ways um, that you give here at Wesley Way and remind you that you can give using the plates that will be passed around today, um, also using Banco Services, our P.O. box, or the box in the back. If you would please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving Father, accept not just these gifts given in your glory, but find good purpose for it in your plans for this church and community. Lord, we ask you to come into us with the Holy Spirit. Let us see the love you have for us. Such an overflowing love. This love has no bounds. Even our worst of actions are neglected because you love us because of the sacrifices you have made. Let us not forget these sacrifices and in turn provide sacrifices of our own. Amen. Be seated. <laughs> Sorry. 
I was like, what's the next thing there? I was pretty sure we were moving to our prayer time, but my, my brain shorted out on me there a little bit. Wake up, squirrel. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, now it's our time to share in our joys and our concerns, to lift up our words for prayer today. What things do you have um, to share this morning? Choir is moving for the. We're going to sing an anthem here in a minute. Everybody's distracted with the choir. Any thoughts for prayer? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, prayers prayers for Liz's sister, Gladys Simmons, who has been diagnosed with Parkinson's, and then prayers for Liz as she is having issues with her, her vision and seeing doctors about that. Okay, thank you. Um, on, on track with the eyes, keep Linda Cloudis in your prayers, continued prayers. She's had her surgery where they, they put like a, an air bubble in her eye, and it has to... The eye has to absorb it, and it, it does what it does as it's healing and all of that. But um, So she has to stay with her head hunched over uh, until the period is over. So I believe it's Tuesday of this week. It was supposed to be, I think, last Thursday, and the doctor wasn't didn't like, uh, it hadn't absorbed enough. So she has to go a little further. So keep, keep Linda Cloudus in your prayers. Okay, anything else this morning? Mm-hmm. They discovered a um, 90 plus percent blockage in an artery, main artery. They did a stent to take care of that. There are other uh, ones that they're watching that are partially blocked. But John Elliott, her son, that was all done this week while she was getting her Goodness. pre op. So if you want to remember John and Mary Elliott, that's who's going to Yeah, and t- say again when her surgery is? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, Monday. Tomorrow. Uh, so prayers for Mary Elliott, Esther's sister, as they have surgery tomorrow to remove the tumor in her brain. And then prayers for her, uh, for Mary's son, John, who had surgeries this week on his carotid arteries, I guess. Yeah. Uh, um, and getting that, putting a stent, yeah, putting a stent. Okay. So prayers for both of those folks. Um, keep... Joyce Ellis in your prayers. Joyce had um, ovarian cancer and had gone through treatment for that and got a clean bill of health. And now I think we're maybe a year past and they're starting to see signs of things again. So she is um, back in under medical care for that and um, not sure all the process for it or where, where if it has moved or, or not, but keep Joyce in your prayers. And then her mom, Jean Dodsworth, and we haven't seen, we haven't seen Jean in church since COVID. And um, Jean's health has been in decline, and um, and she's got uh, some health care folks that are now helping her at home, but um, she's not doing great. Uh, so prayers for, for Jean as well, Jean Dodsworth. Other things this morning? All right, well, let's go to our time of prayer then. Esther will, will lead us um, in a time of reflection and, and personal prayer, and then I will guide us and we'll close with the Lord's Prayer, which will be on the screen and, and there for those at home. Uh, if you're watching with us on Facebook, uh, you're welcome to leave prayer concerns in the comment section, and we take note of those also. Let's pray.
Lord, we give thanks today for who you are. This second Sunday of Easter, we are in this season of Easter, and we are Easter people. Um, we, are, we are here, and we worship and serve you, not, not just because you died on a cross, but because you conquered over the grave. You rose again. Um, that is uh, the main part of our story, and we are so grateful to you, God, that you would love us as you do, forgive us as you do, sacrifice for us as you have, and um, we're so blessed. We're so blessed. God, you see us here this morning. We have called out to you on behalf of others. Lord, these are our friends and our family, our, our close ones. And many of them, Lord, are your children too. God, that you would take notice of them. You already have, but we ask for even extra attention and care for these. My hearts are burdened for them, Lord. They, their bodies are not functioning right. There's cancer present. They, they have a disease or an illness, um, a malady of, of one kind or another. Uh, God, that you would touch and that you would heal. That you would connect these loved ones of ours with, with people who can help them, uh, with the right medical professionals that can um, bring about uh, transformation. But ultimately, God, we're looking for you to touch and to heal and restore. Because sometimes we, our, our, our doctors and physicians, they, they do the best that they know how to do, and, and it still doesn't always work. But we know that you have the ability to raise the dead. And so, God, we look for you to move and to step in. Help us to trust you in whatever ways you seek to move and know that you are um, for our good and for what is best for us. Lord, we thank you for the beauty of your creation, um, for that constant reminder of your creativity, of your diversity, and of just how much you love us, that you would, be, uh, that you would make this place in which we live so, so beautiful. And we are drawn to praise and adoration of who you are. God, continue to work in us. Continue to mold and shape us into your likeness. And as we seek your face, that we might be rewarded with your presence. For you tell us that when we seek you with all of our hearts, that we will find you. And you tell us that when we abide with you, that you abide with us and you bring fruit in our lives. Your fruit, love and kindness and compassion and gentleness, faithfulness and goodness and all those things. So move in us, stir in us, O oh God. Fill us with joy for your name and use us in this world. And Lord, we pray now as you have taught us to pray. When we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Amen.
And now, if you'll stand and greet each other this morning. The first, they answered. And Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. 
For John came to, show you, came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And let's pray together. Lord Christ, we thank you for your word that you've given to us, that we could know who you are and who we are as your people. We ask that any time we should encounter it like this, privately, in a study group, in a song, that you might um, help it to be clear to us, that we might understand its meaning and its fullness and, and know what it means for us today and how we should follow it. Give us courage, O oh God, uh, to be faithful to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Um, as we go throughout our, our days and our weeks, Thank you. I turned it off when we were greeting, and I forgot to turn it back on. Sorry, apologies. Okay. As we uh, go into our, our days and our, our weeks, uh, we try to keep our appointments. We try to keep our schedule, and when we say we're going to be somewhere, we try to follow through with that, but sometimes we're not able to do that. And some of us do better at that than others, and I am notoriously late. You May, I, I'm sure I've talked about that before on numerous occasions probably. And if you have any uh, interactions with me, you'll, you'll know that. Now, I'm always on time for worship, and I've never been late to a funeral, knock on wood. But, um, but I am chronically late in other environments. And uh, so much so, I, I asked my best friend one time if she had Michelle time. You know, if I tell her I'm going to be there at 6, does she work through a mathematical equation to figure out what time I probably actually will arrive? And she confessed that she did uh, try to, you know, add, add some, some time to it to calculate when I would be there, which I felt really bad about because I value her time, even though it may not look that way. I just feel like I can do more with 30 minutes or an hour than I realistically can, and my brain just doesn't seem to be able to grab that. I'm overly optimistic with what I can do with my time, and that usually puts me late to the next whatever it is. But some of you are very conscientious, and you, um, you work really hard to be early to things so that you're not late, and being on time to you means being 15 minutes before the event starts, right? To be being on time is like when the thing starts, that's on time. And others of you would go, no, you're late by that point. You should have been there earlier. But even for you guys that are really conscientious and on time to things and you've got all your ducks in a row, sometimes you're late as well. You can't always keep your commitments. Something else may happen. Someone like me may get in your path and keep you from getting there because they held you from whatever. I know that's a struggle in families sometimes. When I was a teenager... It was often, I, just gra- I don't know, you're not ready yet, get the things, we got to go now in the car, do it in the car, and uh, there was much continuing of getting ready for whatever it was, traveling to wherever we were going, because I didn't have it together. So sometimes that's someone else may make us late, or um, an emergency may happen, and, and so forth. So there's, there's reasons why we aren't able to do the things we always want to do. In our passage this morning, Jesus gives us this parable of a father who has a vineyard, and he has two sons, and he invites really kind of commands. It's not suggestive, right? I mean, he says, go work with me in my vineyard, or go today and work in my vineyard. He doesn't say, do you have time? Can you come over? It's it's really more of a command. But these boys both respond in different ways. One that says, yes, of course, I'll be glad to, I'll be there, and then never shows up. And the other one that's very straightforward and is like, I won't be there at all. But then something happens and he ends up showing up at the end after all. So I want us to think through this a little bit. What would would have kept, let's look at the, the, the second son, the one who immediately says, yes, I'll be there, but then never shows up. What were the things you think that happened maybe, that kept him from being there? Like, why, why did he, he said he was going to be there, but then he doesn't show. What do you think happened to him? Throw out some ideas. What, what changed his mind? What was the difference? Kids. Yeah, maybe his kids. He, he just couldn't get away from the kids. He had to keep tending to them. There was too much going on with their activities. Maybe they were doing something he didn't know about. Um, so he got distracted or, or tied up with his, with his kids. Yeah, so other obligations. Uh, so let's just say that phrase, other obligations. He had other, other obligations, okay? What else? What do you think? What, why, what kept him from being there? 
What? A pet? So kind of in the same vein, a, a, a pet that uh, some kind of obligation with the animal that kept him from uh, being there and do, doing what he said. Laziness. Laziness, yes. Or even maybe he was tired and just kind of worn out. So let's say he was tired. He was tired. That's, oh, that was supposed to be all of us. Let's try it again. He was tired. We'll get there. All right, yeah. Or just lazy. You know, he really said, oh, I'm, I'll do that. And then thought about it later and was like, no, I don't, I don't want to go do that. Yeah, Michael. Can I say again? His heart? His heart? Yeah. As in like he had a palpitations or? He didn't, he, didn't really, he didn't really want to in the first place. Yeah, so he kind of, maybe he wanted to look good to his dad, but ultimately was like, I don't want to go do that. So maybe he just didn't, didn't really want to, didn't have the heart for it. So let's say he didn't want to. He didn't want to. Uh, he changed his mind and just really didn't have his heart in it to do it. What else? He got a better offer. Yes. Yes. Let's say that one. He got a better offer. Ready? He got a better offer. That happens a lot. Oh, I would much rather go do that than this, especially if it's work that's involved, right? Maybe someone invited him to go down to Scoops and get some ice cream. Yes. Let's hang out and visit, and I'll check in with my dad later. Yeah. Yeah, he got a better offer. Um, there's, you know, all these reasons. That's right. He got distracted. Sometimes we get distracted by other things. Um, you know, how many times are we, you know, a phone call, um, something you see in the yard, like I'll, I'll be trying to do one thing and see something else. And I'm like, I'll just do this for a minute. And before I know it, I've spent like a half hour on that. And then I don't have time to do the other thing. Or then I try to do the other thing too. And then I'm behind them. Yeah, we get distracted. I, I'll, I'll open my phone to, you know, open the, the, the screen and all to, to send a text or something. And there's a notification there. And so then I tend to the notification, and then I'm spent time with that. And before I know it, what was I getting into my phone for? There was something I was trying to do. And, you know, we get distracted by things. Um, we're overcommitted. We have too much already scheduled. Sometimes we double book ourselves. And, and, and on the list goes. We get tired. We forget about it. Sometimes we just, we forgot we said we were going to do that. Um, I shared in the first service, there was, Tim had tickets to go to a concert, and when the day of the concert came, there were other things happening that day, and it just slipped his mind, and he forgot about it until the next day when he bumped into someone here at church who had been at that concert that night, and he went, oh, no, I was supposed to go to the concert. He just, just forgot about it. So he was supposed to be there, said he was going to be there, and then for one reason or another, he didn't show up. Now, interesting, though, the other son was very straightforward. I'm not going to be there. I can't be there. But then... He changes his mind too. What, what do you think was a part of that situation? What, what happened for him that made him be able to show up? <laughs> Guilt. Yes, that was mentioned in the first service too. Yeah, he's like, oh, it's not first. all right, fine. I'm going to go help dad. Yeah, yeah, guilt. What else? Why do you think he showed up? Maybe, <laughs> maybe his better offer fell through. Yeah, yeah. So someone over here. Change of heart, yeah, right. You know, where one guy was lacking the right heart, the right attitude, uh, he, changed, he changed his mind. Yeah, he changed, had a change of heart. And his reasons maybe for not being there could have been identical to the things for the brother. Uh, distractions you can't always in, in, uh, predict, but he may have already had plans. He may have been worn out from doing something the day before. Um, you know, there, there was something else that he had going on or he just didn't want to. Uh, I cannot come and help you today because I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to be there. Uh, all those reasons could have been the same, but then he changed his mind. He changed his mind, and he decided to be there after all. Because, see, it didn't matter if, which, if you said you were going to show up or not. It was more important that you actually showed up, that you were actually there at all. Uh, you could say all day long, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that, and, but you lose face when you don't show up, and then the thing that needed to be done didn't get done. Jesus uses this parable to challenge the church leaders um, because they were, they were that second son who said, oh, I'll absolutely be there, but then they really weren't doing the work in the vineyard as the vine owner wanted them to do right? They weren't really being obedient and faithful to God. They were very good about keeping the letter of the law, but missing the point and the purpose and the heart behind all of it. And so Jesus is telling them, you know, tax collectors and prostitutes 
have a better understanding and a grasp of this sense of needing repentance and turning from sin than you guys do. And they are the ones who've come to work in the vineyard. Psh, slap in the face, right? Here are the, the ones who are supposed to know, the ones who are supposed to be working in the vineyard, and they're missing out on it altogether. Jesus goes on in the next several verses and gives the story of the parable of the tenants. Another story about a, a man who owns a vineyard, and he has um, people that are tending to the land for him, and so he, um, he sends folks to go and collect the harvest and um, sends these, these servants to go to the tenants who've been managing it, and they kill the servants. Uh, they beat them, they stone them, and just horribly mistreat them. Uh, because they're, they're very, uh, they very much want it all for themselves. And so then the owner of the vineyard sends his son, and he's like, well, I'm, I'm going to send my son there. They'll respect my son. But of course they do not. And this is represented, this is who Jesus is in the story. He is the son. And they want to kill him to collect the inheritance. And so then the owner of the vineyard goes and cleans house. And he takes care of those, as the text says, those wretched wretches will come to their end. And, uh, and then he'll give the vineyard to those who will take better care of it. As again, it's the same kind of story told in a different format. It's not about looking like you're doing the job. It's about actually following through, right? It's actually showing up when you've been invited and asked, really not invited, asked, commanded, to go and work in the vineyard to actually do, do the work, to actually show up and be present. So which son are you in the story? Are you the one who says, yes, I will be there, and then is not, changes his mind, and other obligations come into play, or priorities are out of balance? Or are you the first son who initially was like, mm, no, I can't do that, but later thought, you know, yeah, I'll go. I'll go and I'll work. And then you're actually the one working in the vineyard. I think probably throughout our lives, we flip-flop between the two, right? There are times when we're more faithful and more obedient to what God calls us to do, and other times when we're, when we're lacking and our priorities get out of balance. But ultimately, God is calling us to come and serve, to work in the vineyard, to not just look like Christ followers externally, but to actually be following through with what we do. And I don't think God is, is asking us and telling us that we have to sell everything you have and make every moment of every day your central focus about sharing the good news with Christ so that every person you see everywhere you go, you are evangelizing to them, telling them about who Jesus is. Uh, because I think that would become a negative sort of thing. People would be like, oh, oh, there, oh gosh, there he is. i got to get out this door and get out this side. You know, we're, we're supposed to um, share this pleasant, pleasing aroma of who Christ is with others, that, that it should be, as Scripture tells us, a sweet-smelling fragrance, that people would see us coming and that would be kind of the, the interaction we would have with them. I think instead God is asking us to make it a part of our every day, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, to be sharing the good news of Jesus Christ in action, word, and deed. To not just uh, go through the motions of our faith, but to actually be working there in the vineyard as, as God has asked us to do. To be servants, to show kindness, to show compassion, to be generous, to be forgiving, uh, to go the extra mile with somebody. These are the things that Christ calls us to do, to forgive, to repent, to go out and work in the vineyard. It seems like it's, it's good merit to say right, off the, out of the, right out of the gate, right off the bat, yes, absolutely, I will be there or be there. But when you don't show up, it's like maybe you should have just been honest from the start. He changed his mind. Whatever plans that son had that day, he changed his mind and he showed up. And that was the one who was truly faithful. God is calling us to step in a similar way, uh, to organize our lives and our priorities that we might be devoted to him. So I pray that you will uh, ponder and see which, which son are you and what is God calling you to do in your workplace, in your school, in your community, in our church, at the grocery store, on a vacation, that we might share the love of God abroad. Let's pray. Lord Christ, uh, we thank you that you are gracious unto us, that even when we are unfaithful, you continue to be faithful. And that every day you, you again provide opportunities for us to be your servants. Where we might be able to go work in the vineyard. Forgive us because we're often 
we're often busy with many things. And though those things matter to our days and our weeks, maybe not as important as your kingdom work. So help us, God, to prioritize. Help us to discern. And when you call us to the vineyard, may we say yes and show up. To the glory of your holy name we ask and we pray. Amen. Amen. As we close our service this morning with our closing hymn, know that the altar is created space. If you'd like to come and to be in prayer about whatever is on your heart today, you're invited to do so. Let's stand as we sing together. Let's sing together, O Jesus, I have promised. place, be reminded that you are Easter people. You are people of our Lord Christ, resurrected and made new by his blood and his body shed for us, given for us that we could have life. So as you go, go with the joy of Jesus Christ within you, and when he calls, may you answer. Amen.